I am redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I am redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I am redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Saved from sin, I know I am. All my sins are taken away. Talk about me. You can talk about me. Just all you please. Just all you please. You can talk about me. You can talk about me. Just all you please. Just all you please. You, you can, can talk, talk about me. Just all you please. I'll pray for you down on my knees. All my sins are taken away. For those of you who are watching the news, for those of you who know Al Baghdadi, anybody know him personally? I didn't think so. He's an ISIS leader, and they finally sent him to Happy Baghdad. So interesting. He's killed a lot of innocent people. Leader of the ISIS. So. Whatever he has, he takes with him. And you know, there's a lot of followers. I've been studying the last few weeks on the evolution theory and atheist. Why actually shouldn't those people act like that? If we come from a monkey, may the strongest win, right? Why not kill off everybody who doesn't agree with us? And you know, when you study the hypocrisy of those people who are against ISIS, here they preach evolution, but there they want to kill ISIS or kill those people. Why not? They're better than we are if they're stronger. That's what evolution does. You finally become stronger and stronger. And anyways, that's the theory. But God speaks differently. We're all created in the image of God. He made us, we didn't make him. And he created the heavens and the earth. So the question is, last week we were talking about human beings making idols out of wood. They, they make a nice little 
picture or a frame, and then they worship it. Well, today, people say, well, we don't actually need an idol because we did not come from a god. We come from a blob that somehow formed by itself. Nothing became something, and then that something became something else until, voila, here we stand, totally formed and totally in, uh, in position where we can send people to the moon and we can do incredible things with the technology that we do we have. Everything's going good except for one thing, the wisdom that a human has and if he's not connected to God, is going to eventually destroy him, regardless how smart he is, regardless what he invents, regardless how much he accomplishes. If he hasn't got God in here and in here, he will self-destruct eventually. That's what the Bible teaches us. So what a man needs to do is find out about his maker. Oh, that's brainwashing you. Yes, if I can be brainwashed by the Bible, may the washing begin. Hallelujah. Because the word of God was given to us from our creator and our maker, and he commands us to study, to show ourselves, to be brainwashed by that book to start studying and seeing. And then you'll start understanding the greatness of God and how puny a human being is. One little breath and he's gone. So today we'll be going in, before we go into this message, let's rise and ask the Lord for blessing. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace. We thank you, Lord, that you'll open our hearts to the truth of what's coming. We ask you, Lord, that you will bless us and make a blessing. Make us a blessing to ourselves in Jesus' name. Amen. We fell in the Garden of Eden, there was this interesting conception where God created a human being. And we, we've been not, uh, the, the physical form comes from the earth, from dust. But the inner spirit comes from the very breath of God. That means we were created in the image of God. Male and female, he created us. He didn't create us transgender. You have to understand that. He made us male and female. But in the Garden of Eden, Satan came in and destroyed the fellowship. And God had to bring us back. It tells us in Isaiah chapter 49 in verse 9, For my name's sake will I defer my anger, and for my praise will I defrain from thee that I caught thee not off. Behold, I have refined thee, but not with silver, I have chosen thee in what? In the furnace of affliction. Anybody who's in religion, who's uh, watching this over the internet, you better understand you were not bought with silver or gold or do's and don'ts. You were bought and paid for and refined in the furnace of affliction. That was at the cross of Calvary, where we were brought back to God. And this is what we better settle in our hearts. There will be no excuses. Oh, I was brainwashed this way. I was taught this way. You had the word of God, and you saw the trees going green every, every spring. You see the animals. You see the birds. You see everything in line, everything going like clockwork, and it never occurred to you there was a maker. You need to be corrected here. It says, I brought you back in the furnace of affliction. Very interesting. And it, then it tells us, Isaiah, when you study Isaiah, it's, it's incredible how 
Isaiah and the New Testament just come together. It says, I have declared you in Isaiah 48 verse 3, I have declared the former things from the beginning and from and went forth out of my mouth. And they went forth out of my mouth and I showed them. I did them suddenly and they came to pass. So the Bible teaches us that from the beginning he created the heavens and the earth. They came forth suddenly and they came to pass. And now we got those very smart scientists or those evolutionists sitting and thinking, I wonder how the earth came to pass. Well, the Bible teaches us how it came to pass. I created them. I brought them forth out of my mouth. That's how it came to being. Not by some blob that suddenly somehow formed and somehow started to ooze and ferment. I bet you it had kick before it became the world, the planet, because it was fermenting so long. You know what? People are so incredibly uh, smart, but when it comes to going to God, their smartness and their wisdom vanishes. So God tells us, you don't have to wonder where I come from, where everything comes from. I formed the things from the beginning. In Isaiah chapter 48, in verse 5, I even from the beginning declared it to thee. Now listen to this. From the beginning I declared, declared it to thee. I wrote a book Moses wrote that book, everything was written down, and even before that, it was passed on by mouth. In the first world before the flood, they believed in God. They knew where the, the Garden of Eden was. They understood the, the cherubim over by the Garden of Eden, watching the gate. They understood it. It's not that they didn't believe but they choose to go against God. It says, I even from the beginning declared it unto thee before it came to pass. I showed it thee, least thou should say, my idol has done them, and my graven image and my molten image has commended them. Today, they don't even have an idol. They don't even have a image. Image. Nothing came from nothing and became something. Somehow, that doesn't make sense to me. Sorry, evolutionists. Sorry, atheists. But your theory doesn't make sense to me, even if I would be an unbeliever. It doesn't make sense. It never can make sense because the human brain, the human brain cannot comprehend it. Nothing coming from nothing. Try that. You cannot even imagine eternity. Never mind nothing came from nothing or something came from nothing. So God wants us to understand this. I have shown it to you from the beginning. It is written. Here is how it went. Here is how it works. Listen to John chapter 1 in verse 1 and 4. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, when without him was not anything made that was made. How what more do you need? For those of you, for those of us who don't want to go into the Old Testament, Let's try the New Testament. John chapter 1, verse 1 to 4. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. That is the truth. Yes, call me brainwashed, but I love the washing I love what it did to me. It made me see hope and a future. 
that's going to last forever. And in him was life. Not only did he make all that, in him was life. And life, that life was the light of man. How many of us have received that light? How many of us, when we watch and look at YouTube, we study stuff, does it match and line up with the Word of God? When we listen to preachers, how many of us take time to think, I wonder if this lines up with the Word of God? The, the, the Bible teaches us that God created the heavens, the earth, and he even, he even created the eternal lake of fire. Very clearly written in the Word of God. God created all that for a purpose. And that purpose is going to someday made, be made very clear to us. Here we can see snatches, little bits of information. I know what the lake of fire is for. I know what this earth is for. It's for us to make decision. Thank God I was born into this earth because I am thankful that my being born into this earth, my putting on flesh and blood, gives me the license to go into eternity where I'm going to live forever and ever. And I'm going to spend my eternity asking and seeking after the wisdom of God. And he's going to show everything to me. He said in the ages to come, he will show us the mysteries of his grace. Listen to Genesis chapter 1 and verse 31. And God saw everything that he made. And behold, it was what? Good? No. He said it was very good. It was very good. And the beginning and the evening and the morning was of the sixth day. So in, in six days, he created everything that was created. And it also at the end, he made the human being. What does he call the human being? Very good. What does he call a horse? Very good. What does he call the, the, the earth, the plants, the animals? Everything he created, he called very good. Now, I wonder how all this came to being. How did that blob form in the ocean? Or how did the ocean become? There goes the stupidity of the wise people of this planet. God explaining here how everything became and they're rejecting God and looking into their glasses of crystal and wondering how everything became. Isn't that incredibly sick in the heart and in the mind? And this is where people are going to end up completely degenerated. I want to speak today to those who are into religion. Religion is the same thing as evolution. Because yes, the religious person, he believes in heaven, the earth, God created everything. But he falls short of how God wants him to turn to him. Listen, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. There it is, step by step, how everything began. And you know what? The religious person believes that. The atheist and the evolutionist might thumb their nose at this. But the religious person looks at it and says, yes, 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 yes. That's exactly how everything 
was made. God is such an incredible thing up there. But the problem is he's up there. He doesn't come down here as far as the religious person is concerned. But here we see the, in the image of God we were created, male or female. Not transgender, male and female. And God saw that it was good. Now listen to 1 Peter in chapter 1 in verse 18. For as much as you know, you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold. From your vain conversation re received by the tradition of your fathers. But you... But with the precious blood of Christ, as a lame, as of a lame without blemish and without spot. For you see, believing that God created everything, it's good that you do that. But you got to step a step farther. We need a God that we can touch, that's tangible, that saved us, that we came one, we became one with. Religion will from afar look at the creation of the heavens and the earth and they will say, what a wonderful God we have. But when it comes to their religion, think about it. Most of us grew up in religious organization and we know for a fact this is what, we, what they preach. Listen, they listen to the vain conversations received by the traditions of their fathers. That's what I grew up in. Vain traditions received by my forefathers. This is how you get into the kingdom of God. This is how you get into the kingdom of God. And, if, and, and you know what? The older you get, the more you see the stupidity of what they call godliness. In the end, we don't even know what true godliness is. Not wearing a suspender was being a very disobedient, ungodly person. And religions have their own pet ideas on what godliness is. Some you could puke at, actually all you could puke on, but in religion they're for real and they're very important. It says, but you were not saved by your traditions, but by the precious blood of Jesus, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. So here we are. We are where God wants us to be. Completely ready for... I got to fix my... Come on, come on. So, so here we are. The, cor the, the corruption of a human being. All these religious ideas. They will simply fail away. But we... When we turn to Christ, our eyes will be opened and we will see what God is and who God is. So this is one of the things that we need to understand. We are fast running out of time. Jesus is about to come back and he wants us to understand that God loves us to the point where he cannot stand to be without us. The, the, what we are seeing on TV today, people are turning away from this God. We're seeing the schools being completely taken over by brainwashing the children. The children are being taught. If you played with a doll when you were four and you're a boy, you may, be a girl, you may be a girl if you played with a doll. If you played with a tractor, you may be a boy. You got to check yourself out. What if you ate grass as a kid? Are you now a cow? I can't figure that out. If you played with a, with a little doll, you may be a boy. 
But if you ate grass, what did it tell you? Stop that stupid stuff. They didn't call you a cow and fat you up to take you to slaughter you. But with the little kids, I studied it the other day on YouTube. In England, in the Scandinavian countries, they're taking their little kids in for hormone shots so that they can either be boys or girls. I saw an interesting picture of three athletes standing there. They won a marathon race. There was this girl with the silver medal, no, with the bronze medal, and there was this girl with the gold medal. And in the middle stands the one with, in the middle stands the one with the gold medal. And guess who he looks like? Just like any other man. But for some reason, they call him a girl. How depraved have they become? 30 years, you would never have thought this was going to happen. You couldn't conceive it. But now it's all over the news. Now there's uh, uh, court cases going on everywhere about this junk. Now you can see you being called a, 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 what do they call people who are who don't agree, I don't know, you're, 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 you're not with us. Anyway, look how crazy everything has become. And here's what the Bible teaches us. This is what's going to happen in the end. The foundations will be removed. Right will be called wrong. Good will be called bad. And this is exactly the direction we're heading. We need to open our hearts. Are we with Jesus? Who do we associate with? Are we truly with Jesus? Are our hearts clean? We better not even hang out with those who don't believe in God. If we do that, their spirit will come upon us. Because we are in dangerous times where the demonic realm is being released and people are not talking about things that maybe could happen. They are talking about things that are happening to them. Being demonically attacked physically during the night. One girl said to me, I haven't slept during the night since I was 11 because I get all those visitors every night. Who are the visitors? They come through the walls. They come through the windows. They're called demons. And they, she somehow has allowed them to come into her house. And now she need, or her parents did, allow that. Now she has to suffer the consequences. Unless she turns wholehearted to God, these things will torment her until the day she dies. This is how it works. I've seen older men, just, they call it dementia or whatever, demons manifesting right in their own faces. People who were supposed to be godly, looking at you with this demonic look in their eyes. And I know for a fact where that comes from because they have been flirting with the word of God in a way that they shouldn't have. The word is true. You don't deny it. You simply turn to it, study it, and make sure that you lean on it. It's good to be brainwashed by the word of God. So open your heart to this and become a blessing to yourself. Amen. When peace like a river attendeth my way When sorrows like sea billows roll Whatever my lot thou hast taught Those
trials should come. Let this blessed assurance control that Christ has regarded my helpless estate and hath shed his own blood for my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul, with my soul, it is well, it is well with my soul. My sin, oh the bliss of this glorious thought, my sin. It is well.